Okay, so what you're gonna want to do is go over here and talk to Zunari. And, uh, he's like, yes, 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 you're the young master who purchased my sale. At last, with those funds, I have been able to open up my stall. But I hate to say that my poor little stall is not an instant success. In fact, it is rather deserted, I'm afraid to say. I think my tragic turn of events is due to the fact that I don't have a wide lineup of products. Yeah, you only have one item, it's a freaking flower. Who's gonna want that? To put it another way, I think my stall would do much better if only I could stock rare items that people can't get anywhere else in town. Yes, yes, that's what I need. Well, to be fair, no one else can, no one can get that flower anywhere else in town, so... Whatever. Maybe it's just because I'm the only one who actually spends rupees in the entire game. Brr. By running a prosperous business, I can play I can play my part to help this town develop and become a happy place. Yes, yeah, that's the most proper perspective. But dear me, if I only had a young partner to help me out, a real go-getter. Well, I took down Gan in, like, two times. Well, not really. Uh, yeah, I do have a delivery... I completely forgot about that freaking delivery bag. Man. I have a small request, and it requires the use of that bag. A request? Hmm. Oh, dear me, I knew it, young master. I knew you'd understand my plight. It is a rather long-winded explanation, but please take the time to hear me out. So basically, you take these items and you trade them to three merchants across the Great Sea. You have to pay them in order to make a merchant's oath with them so that they'll continue to send items this way. And you can actually do this two ways. There's a long version of the side quest and a short version of the side quest. I'm going to be showing both of them in my LP, but I'm supposed to be talking to Zunari, and Zunari's not doing an LP of this game as far as I know, so we're just going to talk, not talk about that. But if you do it and you get to the Shop Guru Statue, which is the last item in the trading side quest, then you actually get something really cool from this guy, and it's going to be really fun. I don't know why I'm talking to myself as this guy, but whatever. And if you trade that Shop Guru Statue even further, you can actually get a piece of heart too. And I know I totally just spoiled that for anyone. I spoiled the end of the side quest like you care. And, uh, perfectly, yeah. Yes, yes, young master. Now you are a new salesman. No, no, scratch that. <laughs> scratch that. Reverse it. Starting to tell you, you and I are partners. Dear me, yes. Oh, so are we going to rename this place Zunari and Link? Or Zunari and Argon? But here is our first mar merchant's oath, I guess. The town flower. Hell yeah. Okay, so... Like I was saying, there's three merchants out across the Great Sea, and uh, they are located at Mother and Child Isles, Great Fish Island, and um, and Balm Island. Uh, I'm sure two of them are pretty easy to know where they are, but Balm Island, in case you didn't remember, is one square north of the Forest Haven. And what you're going to need to do is travel between these three merchants and trade from item to item in order to get... Uh, up to the highest tier of item, I guess, which, like I said, is the Shop Guru statue. Sorry if you didn't want that spoiled for you, but, uh, to each his own. So we're gonna start by going to Great Fish Isle here, which is probably the easiest one, the easiest merchant to get to, because, uh, because you can just warp right to, and the other two you can't actually warp right to. You have to do a bit of sailing for those guys. And like I was saying, too, I don't know if anyone caught it, but there's a long version and a short version of this side quest. The long version is the one I'm going to be doing. And, uh, which way is the wind going right now? I kind of want to change that, I think. The long version, is which I'm going to be doing, is, uh, it lets you get all the items in the sequence, all the items to trade, so that you can purchase everything, like any of the items that you want from Zunari's shop. Um, but it costs 755 rupees. I just want to show off all the items, so I'm going to be doing that one. And, uh, the short route only costs 555 rupees, so you actually save 200 rupees. But you miss out on three of the items in the sequence. Either way, you'll be able to get the reward for the quest, though, as well as the secondary reward, which is the heart piece, like I said. And I don't think these merchants actually appear until you talk to Zunari, so... Be sure to do that first, otherwise he'll just come here and be like, Why aren't you here? <sighs> Why'd you have to go and make this so complicated? I'm what you call a traveling merchant. Yes, I'm a cheery fellow who bops between waves in search of all manner of rare items. Cracked and pristine, wild and woolly. <laughs> I came from distant lands because I heard there was a treasure of great worth on this island, but I can't find a thing. I thought perhaps my fate would cross with that most mystic of rare items, the fabled shop guru statue. But it seems, could you imagine if Jaboon actually did have the Shop Guru statue instead of the pearl? That would be hilarious. <laughs> He's like, you're looking for the third pearl? I don't have it, but I have this picture for the statue of a guy. So, pff, whatever. Mm -hmm. This knapsack I'm bugging around is stuffed full of all sorts of wondrous things. Why don't you show me what you got and I'll show you what I'll trade for it. You got it, man. By the way, as a quick sort of Easter egg thing, uh, if you come far enough away from him, you take out your Deku Leaf and you blow his face... <laughs> Yeah, she's he's a Goron. I caught you. I caught you. You're a Goron. You can't hide from me anymore. 
And the cat's out of the bag, man. Uh, I'm not gonna trade you bait. What am I doing? Oh my god, put that sail back on. Put that sail back on your face. All right, here's a town flower for you. So happy. That's a town flower, is it not? In that case, would you be interested in trading that for this sea flower? Okay. Any of the merchants that you offer the town flower to will give you the sea flower here and cost 20 rupees. So there you go. Sweet. Yeah, so both the long and short quests actually start the same way. They start with the same like series of trades. And they differ in the middle quite a bit. And then they end the same way too with the same trades. There's the merchant's oath, yada yada. Thanks again. And we're just going to trade this right back to him for our next item. Like clockwork basically for now. And he gives you the exotic flower. This is the only guy that will give you the exotic flower though. So yeah, make sure you trade with him. Sweet. Okay. And now is where it's actually going to start differing between the long and short version of this eye quest. Uh, if you're doing the long version, you're going to head to Mother and Child Isles to trade this flower. If you're doing the short version, you're going to head to Bomb Island. So, take that in stride. Oh, there's actually a treasure over here, Tingle Island. Fancy that. I think I'm going to pick that up, actually, because I don't think I have enough rupees to fully complete this eye quest. By the way, I warped to Tingle Island instead of warping straight to Mother and Child Isles, because if you warp straight there, then you'll actually end up inside the island instead of like being able to go to the child island where the merchant actually is. Alright, got it. This is probably 200 rupees, I'd wager. I mean, it's Tingle Island's treasure, so you gotta imagine it's a pretty handsome sum of cash. That'd be kind of funny if it was like 500 rupees instead, just because it's Tingle, and Tingle's a greedy bastard, as we'll find it a little later on. Yeah, there you go, silver rupee. Now I should have enough to do the quest. Okay, I figured as long as we're heading to Mother and Child Isles for this trading sequence thing, uh, we might as well knock out as much as we can, since we actually don't have this area on our map quite yet. And I also see a treasure over there too, so we'll conquer that as well. But for now, let's get this feller down. Go down, down, up an early round, and we're freezing seagulls in the sky. Mm -hmm. And I think he's probably just going to tell me something about, like, Something we already done, like the fire and ice arrows inside the island or something. I'm pretty sure that's where you're supposed to learn is from this guy to use the cyclones to get in there. But we already knew that, so don't matter too much. Mm, yeah, inside the rock perimeter. Lobby, did, did he say no one's ever met her? Well, you can talk. You're talking to the only guy who's met her, I guess. Gotcha. Nice. I think we're on the weird side of the boat, though, so we're gonna get a weird angled cutscene, like all mirrored and shit. Not that that's a terrible thing. Lefty cutscenes are never bad. There we go. Silver rupee. That's so. If you need any rupees for this quest, there you go. There's plenty. There's plenty around the Great Sea here. All right. Now that we've actually done that, though, let's go ahead and. Uh, get on with the quest, the thing we actually came here for. I feel, crap, I feel so stupid calling it a quest, because that makes it sound way more epic than it actually is. I mean, we're just trading and whatnot. I mean, it is a really fun quest to me anyways, just because, because it's just so unique, it's so different from anything else you do in the game, and you get all these, like, crazy, unique new items and these awesome conversations with these Gorons. Well, I'm what's called a traveling merchant, just a poor wanderer cruising the world. I think he actually is a eventually says something different than the other guy. I detected a scent wafting from this island that suggested to me that there might be something of value here. So I have my time so I sail my tiny raft all the way from a far far away. Wow. He's crazy. But the high rock wall on the main island blocks my way, so I see so it seems as though I won't be able to get much farther. What a dis disagreeable turn of events. Can't you just eat the rock wall? <laughs> Jeez. Maybe it's too salty. Uh, that delivery bag of yours smells as if it might be... It smells mighty feisty! If you have any curios that might be worth, uh, of selling... That might be worthy of selling in a shop, might you trade them with me? Someday I'm going to open myself a shop. A huge shop! No! A mega superstore! A Walmart! Yeah, buddy! Fuck the Walmart of flowers! So many flowers! Okay. And that's an exotic flower, and he'll give you the pinwheel? Is that right? There it is, yeah. This is one of the three items you'll miss if you're doing the short version of this side quest. Well, that thing you got there doesn't look so hot. So, <laughs> it's a flower. It's supposed to be cool, man. Alright, this is a deal. 
Don't hurt, don't worry, don't, real, don't, bleh, oh my god, I can't talk at all today, I'm so sorry. I was trying to say don't really have a choice in the matter, do I? Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and head down to Bomb Island. Alright, who's going to start raining? It's getting kind of dark. Well, I guess it is nighttime, so duh. Oh, but it did start raining too. Anyways, here's our third merchant fellow. They won't trade you until you talk to them one time, at least. Have we met before somewhere? Aren't you? No, you couldn't be. Or do you freaking like, Argon the Goron? From Ocarina of Time, or even Majora's Mask? Oh, let's see. Modern and ancient. Foreign and exotic. Oh, I had an exotic flower. I could have given that to you, but... Sorry to say it wasn't doing the short version of the quest. Mm. Alright, yeah. Uh, he's not really saying too much interesting, so... Let's just get on with this. Okay, so for this, he should... Oh my gosh. Mm, my voice is getting a little scratchy, sorry. But he'll give us the Sickle Moon Flag, which is one of the cooler looking things in the quest, in my opinion. And he'll give you this... If you're doing the short version of the quest, he'll give you this for your exotic flower when you come to trade him. There you go. So basically you bypass the pinwheel with that, like I already mentioned before. Now next in the trading sequence, um, if you're doing the long version, you're going to want to head to, back to Great Fish Isle. Wait, no, that's wrong. Or is that right? No, you're going to head to Mother and Child Isles to trade this. If you're doing the short version of this quest, you trade it right back to this guy, and he'll give you the Fountain Idol for it. So there's that. This is a cool island, by the way. And since this is pretty much the only time that you're really required to head to this island at all anyways, at least if you're doing side quests and whatnot, I think I'm actually going to check it out here, because we didn't have bombs the first time we we dropped by, so... Now we do, we can actually do this and watch it go BOOM! That was delayed. Whatever. Oh, this is a pretty fun area, actually, a little mini dungeon here. It's kind of hard, now that I think about it. And I don't mean erect. Alright, where is he? I know there's a mag tail down here. The whole gimmick of this... Ow, dude. <laughs> He, didn't even, he just, like, touched me. That's like in the old Zelda games where, like, something, something, something touching you can just hurt you. That doesn't normally happen with, like, newer games. But whatever. Yeah, so basically this is the whole gimmick of this area. Is that you're, you're gonna need to uh, use magtails to hold down switches for the most part. There's, like, this one switch over here that you don't need one for. You just press it down yourself. But, uh, the concept still holds true, I guess. Just pressing switches to advance. Classic Zelda clockwork. Mm -hmm. That is a little bit of precision walking back there, though. I didn't really make note of that. A little bit here, too, but not so bad. Yeah, so be, just be sure not to kill them. Dude, he was going so high up in the air. He was practically flying there. Like the freaking Thunder Dragon or something. The Leviathan? I don't even know. Alright, come on. Go in, baby. Baby? Baby? I was trying to say buddy or baby. But whatever. And this last one shouldn't be too difficult. That one I just did now was pretty much the hardest one. They have to do. This one's really easy because there's only one little platform to get across. Booyah. Told you it was just like clockwork. By the way, I didn't actually do it myself here, but something that's kind of fun to do. I don't know, it's kind of cruel in a sense, but they respawn anyways, so uh. Once you're done with them, once you put them on, like, the switches, I sometimes like to go and drop a bomb in the hole that they're in, where the switch lies, and just, like, explode them, because they're just sitting there totally helpless, so... I don't know. That sounds kind of vicious and barbaric, just trying to describe that to you, but it's really funny if you actually do it yourself. Just, just trust me on it. I'm not a psychopath. Uh. 